Let's talk algebraic proofs. So algebraic proofs is simply, um, well, basically, let's just talk about a proof. A proof is simply an argument that's going to show that a conclusion is true. So when we're talking about that, we need reasons. We need, um, well, why is this true? So we have something called properties of equality. Properties of equality has several different categories, ranging from addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, to other maybe not so well-known um, categories like reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and substitution. Well, you've dealt with substitution before. You probably just don't didn't realize it was under the properties of equality. There's one more that I'd like to add, which is called distributive property, because that sometimes is used as well. And you've seen that before. Um, that would be an instance, say, for instance, if you had like a case, I'm sorry, A times, we'll just use letters. So distributive property, you've seen this before again. So basically, you would take A and you would distribute it to B. So AB and then A times C, which is AC. So that's known as distributive property. So going back to the properties of equality step by step, so for addition, if e is e a is equal to b, then a plus c is equal to b plus c. So what happened is I just added c on both sides. So that's called the addition property of equality. And this is what it looks like if you're referring to numbers. So x was negative 4. And then in this case, you just added 4 to both sides. x equals negative 4, but we wanted to add 4. Subtraction. Same thing, if A is equal to B, the only difference is the sign. A minus C equals B minus C. So that's what we're doing. We're subtracting on both sides because, again, when you have an equal sign, you have to, what you do to one side, you do to the other. That's balancing the equation. So R plus 1 equals 7. If we want to get that 1 to the other side, we would have to subtract 1 on both sides. Multiplication, using the same scenario if A equals B. So if A equals B, the only thing that happened is both A and B were multiplied by C. Remember, if you have a variable next to another variable, that means multiplication. Same thing if you have a number next to a variable. That means multiplication. So this is what that would look like. If your original equation was K divided by 2 equals 8, then they wanted you to multiply both sides by 2. This is what it would look like. The fraction divi uh, multiplied by 2 is set equal to 8 multiplied by that same number. Division, well, A is equal to 2 this time. Well, C cannot equal 0. That means the denominator. You cannot have a 0 in the denominator or it is undefined. So A over C is equal to B over C. So they're dividing both sides by C. And again, C cannot equal 0. That's what the little slash means when it's in the equal sign. It cannot or is not. If I'm looking at it in terms of uh, an equation, 6 equals 3t. If I'm trying to get t by itself, I would divide both sides by that 3. And that's what's happening. Reflexive is like if you're looking in the mirror, you see yourself. It's the exact same thing, right? Same thing here. A is equal to A. With numbers, 15 is 15. So both sides of the equation are going to be equal. That's called reflexive. Symmetric, if A equals B, then B equals A. So you're just writing it in reverse. So N equals 2, therefore 2 equals N. Or vice versa, 2 equals N, therefore N equals 2. That's called symmetric. And after each one of these categories, you would say property of equality. It's saying properties because it's listing all of them, but if you're doing one at a time, it's property of equality. Okay, the next one, transitive. If A equals B and B equals C, by default, A also equals C. Because you'll notice that the B's are exactly the same in the first equation and the second equation. So if A is equal to that B and B is equal to C, by default, A is also equal to C. That's called transitive. And again, if you needed to see what it would look like in terms of numbers, there you go. Substitution, if A equals B, then B can be substituted for A in any expression. You're saying they're the same. A is B. 
So if x is equal to 7, that means every time I see an x, I'm going to replace it with that 7. And that's what they did. So 2x became 2 times 7 because it's no longer x. So this is a rundown of your properties of equality. Let's get to some examples so we can try to justify our steps. So I've set up what's called two column proofs. You have two columns and you're trying to justify your each step along the way. So the first column heading is called statement. That's where you're actually showing your work. So the first thing I'm going to write down is the problem. 9 plus n equals 4n. Typically this is not written for you. I just wrote it to save time. So why? Why is why am I writing this? Because it was given. So my reason would tell me the justification. This is where I will use that property of equality categories that I saw a few minutes ago. What would I do next? Everyone may think differently. Someone may do one way versus the other. It does not matter as long as you're justifying your steps. What I would do is subtract n from both sides, which leaves me with 9 is equal to 3n. So I said I subtract it. So that means I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality. I abbreviate a lot. Okay. So subtraction property of equality. And again, everything that I use as a category, I'm going to follow with property of equality if it is in that table that we just looked at. What is the next thing I'm going to do? Me personally, I'm going to divide both sides by three. So I'm showing my work. When I divide both sides by 3, I have 3 is equal to n. What did I say that I was going to do? Division, property of equality. And then some of you would want to stop here, but we actually have another category we can use. So I'm going to rewrite this with the variable on the left-hand side. And if you recall, there was something called symmetric property of equality. So that's what I would write for my reason. So let's go back up there just so you'll know. This one. If A equals B, then B equals A. And this is the example. Again, I'm just rewriting with my variable on the left-hand side. So that's why I did the work that I did the way that I did it. I used that particular property. My next example I have parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my statement. And then the second thing I'm going to do, I know when I have a set of parentheses, that means I'm going to distribute. So I have a 2 times x, 2 times a negative 5, which is negative 10 equals negative 20. What did I do? I used the distributive property. Remember, that wasn't in my chart, but I added it because I know from time to time you do have to use this distributive property. The next thing I would do is add 10 on both sides, which would leave me with 2x is equal to negative 10. And again, what I am saying is what I is the reason why I'm doing it. So addition, property of equality. And then what would I do next? I would divide both sides by 2, which will result in x is equal to negative 5. And what did I say that I was going to do? I said divide, which is under division property of equality. So you can write the word out or you can abbreviate it. It depends on your teacher. I'm OK with abbreviation. Let's get another example, this time using a fraction. So I'm going to write my statement, which is the actual problem. And again, you would not normally be, um, this would not be pre-written for you. So you have to remember 99% of the time, the first reason is given. What would you do after this? Me, I would add 4 to both sides, which would leave me with L over 2 is equal to 12. And I said I'm going to add. So that's the addition property of equality. And then what would I do after that? 
I would cross multiply. I know that if I have a fraction set equal to a whole number, I can make that whole number a fraction by simply putting it over 1. So L times 1 is L. 2 times 12 is 24. So here, some people would write simplify, but what did I do? I actually multiply. So this is the preferred answer. But again, some people write simplified. Multiplication property of equality. And then one final example that has one more fraction has because I know you love fractions. And I'm going to write down the statement first. My reason is given. What am I going to do next? Again, I have a fraction set equal to a whole number. I'm going to cross multiply. M plus 4, this entire expression times 1 is itself. So M plus 4 is equal to 7 times 3, which is 21. What did I say? 7 times. So that means I'm multiplying. So multiplication property of equality. That's some serious abbreviating right there, but I do that also, property of equality. And then what do you do now? Well, I can subtract 4 on both sides. And if I did that, I end up with m is equal to 17. And what did I say that I was going to do? Subtract. So subtraction, property of equality. And I'm finished. That's all you have to do if you're trying to create algebraic proofs.